Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and other talk stories that are happening. Sindhi Foundation protest against disappearance of minor girl alleges Pakistan is And locals deep cry Nepal's crisis airport in the Chinese And now for all the details. Axis forces during the World War II. PM Modi, during the delegation level talk with the Russian president, discussed the further strengthening of bilateral ties between the two nations across various sectors like trade, energy, and defense cooperation. Putin has also accepted Modi's request, made at a private dinner on Monday, to discharge those wishing to return to India. This is PM Modi's first visit to Russia since the ongoing war in Ukraine started. Russia remains a key supplier of cut price oil and weapons to India, especially following sanctions on Moscow imposed by the United States and its allies, which came in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine and shut most Western markets off to Russian exports. PM Modi is scheduled to depart for Austria later in the day. A search operation is underway in Katua district of India's Jammu and Kashmir after terrorists ambushed an army convoy on Monday evening, killing five Indian army personnel. According to defense sources, the convoy, which was on a routine movement, was attacked by terrorists in the Machedi area of Katua district. After the terrorists opened fire, the statement from a defense official said our troops also retaliated. Reports suggest that around three to four terrorists who are likely foreigners were behind the attack. A joint cordon and search operation by security forces was underway until the last reports came in. But this infiltration south of Pir Panjal is uh, rather alarming and uh, we'll have to take steps because uh, Pakistan will not uh, sort of budge and they have decided that may be instigated by China, that they will continue to use uh, terrorism as an instrument of state policy. The Interior Ministry of Pakistan on Monday defended the months-long ban on the social networking company, ex formerly known as Twitter, calling it a threat to peace and national security. The ministry in a court said that the hostile elements operating on X have nefarious intentions to create an environment of chaos and instability with the ultimate goal of destabilizing the country and plunging it into some form of anarchy. It added that elements of society involved in a defamatory campaign against state institutions are exploiting platform X to spread misinformation and incite violence. The ban was imposed in February, days after widespread protests against alleged rigging in the general elections, drawing widespread public outcry. Pakistan's powerful military has regularly been calling critical social media campaigns digital terrorism. The Sindhi Foundation recently held a demonstration in Geneva to protest against the enforced disappearances of a minor girl from Pakistan three years ago. The protesters have blamed the Pakistan military for the abduction. A report. The Sindhi Foundation on Monday held a protest in front of the UN in Geneva against the forceful disappearance of a minor girl from the Sindh province in Pakistan and called for her release. The protest coincided with the UN Human Rights Council's 56th session. Then seven years old Priya Kumari was disappeared when she was engaged in cultural services for Muslims during Muharram. The protesters have called on international community, especially the United Nations, to conduct an independent investigation regarding the matter. 
I came all the way from Washington DC to the Switzerland, especially for Priya Kumari. Three years ago, she was disappeared. In four disappeared, forcefully disappeared in Sindh province of Pakistan. She was only seven years old. It's still, it's a, we don't know where she is, but there are speculations that the Sindhis, feudal lords, shahs, and their supporters, Pakistani military, they disappear her. What is the purpose? Why they disappear her? Why are disappearing our daughters? The reason is the Sindhi Hindus living in the Sindh, but they are trying to forcefully to kidnap them, ransom, or they want they should leave the Sindh. The protesters criticize the Pakistan army, asserting that despite branding themselves as the world's most formidable intelligence agency, they have failed to find a missing minor girl. They also alleged that the military was responsible for her disappearance. The Pakistan army claims that ISI is the world's strong intelligence agency. From three years, she's a kidnapped. She's in Sakhar. We know, everybody knows, she's adopted by Shah family. But they don't want to release the agencies, the police, the army, where they are. I'm asking Chief of Army Staff, General Asim Munir, you claim that you are a very most powerful person. And Agencies, your agencies like ISI, world's most. So where is the Prem Priya Kumari? From three years. Why she's a kidnapped? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the uh, problem to not release? Because she's a Hindu. Because she's a with from poor family. The forceful disappearances of Sindhi people by the Pakistan army has been a contentious issue marked by allegations of human rights abuses and suppression of dissent. Reports and accounts from various sources indicate instances where Sindhi activists, journalists and civilians have been subjected to intimidation and forced disappearances and detentions. Sri Lanka will wrap up talks with the international bondholders on restructuring 12.5 billion US dollars in debt within a few weeks, Foreign Minister Ali Sabri said on Tuesday. A major step for the island nation to emerge from its worst financial crisis in decades. Speaking to Reuters, Sabri said the island nation hopes to conclude the restructuring process within a couple of weeks after which it will begin payments. He said Sri Lanka will also seek to balance its relations with giant neighbours India and China to ensure there is no difference in how it deals with them. Sabri said while Colombo is engaging with India, China and others, it has made clear to its partners that Lanka will not allow anything which would legitimately threaten a neighbour's security. A country of 22 million, Sri Lanka's economy is heavily dependent on foreign tourists and investments. Its strategic location on a major east-west shipping route close to the southern tip of India makes it a key political player. While India enjoys strong cultural ties with Sri Lanka, China has competed for influence in Colombo in recent years and the island nation has often been caught in the rivalry. A group of protesters on Monday staged a protest in front of Pokhara International Airport, criticizing China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, and claimed it is a tool for Beijing to intervene in Nepal. Led by National Unity Movement's chairman Vinay Yadav, over 200 locals and activists joined the protest. The protest coincided with the visit of a parliamentary committee inspecting and investigating claims of embezzlement during the airport's construction, raising concerns about the airport, which currently only operates domestic flights. Yadav said China wants to capture Pokhara International Airport, just like it did it with the Habantota port in Sri Lanka and Gwadar port in Pakistan. This is because the place has geological significance. He added that Nepal cannot repay the expensive loans and interest 
and demanded that the loan can be converted into a grant. The airport, built at a cost of 1.37 billion yuan, opened in January 2023. However, it has not seen frequent international flights except for rare chartered Chinese flights. Its association with China's BRI project has also made it difficult to attract international flights, especially from Indian airlines. New Delhi opposes the BRI initiative, citing infringement on its sovereign territory. Severe flooding in Bangladesh's northern regions has left 2 million people stranded and schools closed on Monday as the Brahmaputra River burst its banks following heavy rain. Roads and houses in Jamalpur city were flooded with water and villagers were seen wading in knee-high, fast-gushing waters. Thousands of people in the area have taken refuge in temporary shelters as schools in Jamalpur, Kurigram and nearby towns were shut on days that students were meant to take their higher secondary certificate exams. The local meteorological office said that the flood water from the Solan Brahmaputra River could recede in the coming days, but heavy rain showers are expected to hit central and southern regions in the next five days. The death toll from floods in Bangladesh this week has risen to eight, leaving more than two million people affected. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.